Welcome to Crimson News at Noon, everyone. I'm Laura Papetti, and we begin with breaking news. Coeur d'Alene Police, they are investigating two explosives found in a home near Lakes Middle School. Here is what officials are telling us as of right now. Two possible explosives were found near the middle school. The homeowner found the devices, took a picture, and then sent those pictures to Coeur d'Alene Police. The Spokane Explosives Disposal Unit said the devices are far away from the middle school and no one is in current danger. However, the police department in Coeur d'Alene is asking folks to stay away from the area near North 14th Street. Crimson News has a crew headed to the scene right now and for the very latest information, you can check our website on crim.com. We will certainly keep you updated. And we do have a traffic alert to tell you for now. Bigelow Gulch remains closed today after a deadly crash this morning. So we're going to get right to Nicole Hernandez. She is covering this story and is joining us with the very latest. Yeah, Laura, so right now I'm on Bigelow Gold's Road right near Wiley, and this is the road here that's closed behind me here. I'm going to step aside so you can actually get a look at what's going on. There's a semi truck in that ditch there, as well as a red sedan. Earlier this morning, what happened is this semi truck was going west on Bigelow Gold's Road when it veered into the oncoming traffic lane ultimately hitting the red sedan. Now two people were inside this semi truck here and three people were in the red sedan. I'm going to give you a look at that red sedan off to the right here. You can see some power crews and tow trucks as well. They're working that red sedan though had three people inside of it. All five people total ended up having to go to the hospital. One person did die. The three people in that red sedan ended up with more serious injuries than the two people in the semi truck. The one person Person that did die was in that red sedan there. Now we again have Bigelow Gulch Road still closed here this afternoon. Crews say that they're not sure exactly when they're going to be reopening the road because at this point they're still trying to get the semi truck towed out of this area. Right now you can kind of hear the chainsaws maybe in the background there. That's as crews work to start the process of getting the truck out after investigators finished up their investigation of the actual crash scene. There is a power line that's hanging close to the semi truck. So Inland Power is out here as part of those crews working to get this tow truck out. The road will be closed until they can get that finished. The one thing we do know at this point, this investigation is still a bit preliminary, but so far it looks like road conditions were part of the reason for this crash here. Remembering this morning, we had very icy and foggy conditions in this area. In Spokane, Nicole Hernandez, Crime 2 News. Also breaking at noon right now, Spokane police have arrested a suspect in an early morning shooting that happened on Spokane South Hill. Information is coming into our newsroom right now. The shooting happened at about 3 a.m. this morning on 55th Avenue. Police arrived on scene and found a man with gunshot wounds. Despite life-saving efforts, he did not survive. Police, however, have arrested the suspect, 22-year-old Cody Lowe, for second-degree murder. He is facing, again, second-degree murder charges at this time. Major Crimes is handling that investigation. The identity of the victim will be released by the Spokane County Medical Examiner. And we'll continue, of course, to track that story. It is four minutes past noon right now. We know uh, the conditions have been uh, changing throughout the morning, very foggy. I see this morning as we saw those roads uh, become very dangerous at the noon hour. However, Thomas, things have warmed up a bit. Uh, so let us know what we can expect the next several hours. Yeah, during the early morning hours, just before sunrise, our temperature is here at our South Hill studios was right at 31 degrees, just enough to ice almost everything over. Right now it's 36 and things have thawed out, so we definitely have solid footing from our outdoor weather center. But now the rain is coming in, just a few sprinkles above my head here as this next batch of rainfall, bit of a warm front starts to pass through the area, mostly just light scattered showers around Spokane. Can County, but look at the more widespread rain through our northeastern Washington areas, Colville and Chewila, Kettle Falls, all included in that. And as we pan down towards the Palouse, even more widespread rain right through La Crosse, Pomeroy, Pullman, and Moscow, all getting a fairly light rain, but enough to keep things very much wet and a little bit more of that snow melting for today. But most importantly, we are 
Definitely warmer than it was a couple hours ago, even up to 40 degrees at the moment in Deer Park and 36 in Spokane. This is a decently mild weather pattern that we're in right now, and we'll show you how much warmer conditions will be to finish out the month. Those details are all in just a couple minutes. Thomas, thank you. We do have some new developments in the grounding of the locally built Boeing 737 MAX 9 after a door plug blew out one of those planes earlier this month happened in midair. Here's what we know right now. Today's Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun is in Washington, D.C., meeting with several lawmakers, including Washington Senator Maria Cantwell, the chair of the Transportation Committee as well. She is the chair of the Transportation Committee. The FAA is asking the airlines to check door plugs on their MAX 9 planes. Tomorrow, Boeing will pause production in western Washington for one day. The company says it is the first of many quality stand down days, they are calling it, at its factories in the coming weeks. And this morning, six road crew uh, members with the Washington Department of Transportation are recovering after a suspected drunk driver crashed into the back of their trucks in Vancouver. WashDOT says this happened just 90 seconds after workers got there to repair some potholes. The six workers were taken to the hospital. They've all been released and sent home to recover. After they got through the initial shock of everything, uh, the, their spirits were surprisingly high. I mean, um, it takes a it takes a uh, a fun bunch to be able to go out and do the work that we do and then come back and still have a positive attitude. So here's a look at the damage to both washed out vehicles. We're told the driver was going 60 miles an hour when he hit the trucks. The Washington State Patrol arrested the driver on suspicion of DUI and vehicular assault. Covering North Idaho this afternoon, a new anti-drug trafficking bill is now moving forward at the Idaho State House. House Bill 406 heads to the House floor for a full vote. The bill does really two things. First, it adds fentanyl to the list of drugs in Idaho that can carry a mandatory minimum sentence. Secondly, the bill creates the crime of drug-induced murder. This means if someone is given fentanyl and it kills that person, the person who gave it to them can be arrested and charged with murder. These kinds of mandatory minimums deter the people we want to deter. They deter the big dealers. They deter the cartels. Now, police officers testified that the policy will push traffickers to neighboring states and slow the flow of fentanyl into Idaho. However, some lawmakers still held concerns that this law could grant the government the ability to prosecute trafficking without proving the intent to sell and murder without proving, again, that intent to kill. The bill is expected to pass in the House as a majority of the representatives in the House are sponsoring the bill. If it does pass, it will then head to the Senate for a vote. State leaders looking at, at new efforts to battle Washington's drug crisis. Coming up in two minutes, how the new proposals could turn the tide to promote treatments and recovery.